Welcome to the Great British Woodshop. In today's show, we're going to finish this project, a serving trolley. In our first show, I showed you this original, and we talked about a few of the improvements that I wanted to make. I wasn't entirely happy with these joints here. Instead of sitting the cross pieces in trenches and screwing and plugging them, I decided to make them out of mortise and tenon joints. And over here on the removable tray, a great idea, but I thickened up these boards and I linked them all together with tongue and groove joints. Now we finished everything on the upper deck except the tiling, and we'll do that a little later. And down here, I want to start today by building the lower deck. Well, I love power tools and woodworking gadgets of all sorts, but I treat them all with the greatest of respect, and you should too. The only time I ever remove the guards in the shop is so you can see what I'm actually doing. They're an important safety feature and should otherwise always be left on. Well, with a compound miter saw, you generally have two options when you're cutting miters. You can move the saw around to 45 degrees and then make your cut with the piece standing on its end. Now, this is a 100 mil wide piece of wood and it won't fit underneath my saw. So what I've done is laid it flat on its face and tilted the saw over to 45 degrees. And I've also added a clamp here to make sure that the piece doesn't move as I make the cut because I could spoil the joint. The saw gets left at the same position it was for the first cut. And now I'm going to mark the position for the second cut on the long rail of the lower deck, which is 1038. I'll just square a line across. And I'm going to use this line to line up the saw. And I'll just make a couple of little trial cuts here, very shallow. Now with that board held in place and not moving it at all, I'm going to slide my stop up underneath it. Now I can't use the, the gauge on the stop because the saw is tilted over to 45 degrees. But by bringing this up and holding it in place, it'll give me a reference point so that when I cut the second rail, it'll be exactly the same length as this one. Now you know you're going to have a perfect square if these angles are 45 degrees and each pair of boards is cut at exactly the same length. Now the next thing I'm going to do is cut a trench in both of the long rails and I'll do that over at the router table. Well those trenches will be to receive slats that form the storage area in the lower deck. And to cut the trenches I've installed a straight cutting bit in the router table and I've raised it up to make a 10 mil deep trench. I've also set the fence 15 mil back from the cutter. The gaps between each of the slats is intentional. It's there to allow water to drain away, but I think this will look a whole lot nicer if I chamfer the two top edges. Well, here's all our 17 slats, chamfered and cut. Now, before I can put them into this frame, I'm going to add some number 10 biscuits to strengthen the joints. I'm paying some attention to the position of the biscuit because if I have it too low, it'll interfere with the bottom of the trench. But about there looks fine. I can just put a mark. Well, I must say, a biscuit jointer is a handy tool to have in the shop. And they all have a rotating disc, which cuts a slot. And a depth gauge for selecting the size biscuits you want. And we're using a number 10 biscuit. And a 10 means that it'll only leave a portion of the cutter exposed. They have an adjustable fence that'll move from 0 to 90. And those clicks you can hear are the common angles that are used when you're cutting. And we're, using, we're setting this one to 45 degrees. They also have a center indicator that marks the center of the disc. And that's the point I'm going to put over the pencil line that I made earlier. Well, I've held the two rails together with a clamp. And I've just spent a few minutes sliding all the slats into those trenches. And now we're ready to put on some glue. I'm using a waterproof glue again because this is an outdoor project and I've wiped all the surfaces down with some of that cellulose thinners. It's 
Take a little time and you'll get really nice mitres in these corners. These biscuits are made out of beech and when they get wet or you get any glue on them, they swell up and they hold the joint very tightly. I'm using a band clamp to clamp this frame up. I can't think of a better clamp to use in a situation like this. So it pulls all the mitres close to, to each other. And all it is is just a piece of webbing which you tighten up and then by turning this handle it just tightens the webbing even more and pulls in these little angled brackets on the corners. Check the square. It's one, two, three, seven. And one, two, three, two. So I just need to move this slightly this way. Check it again. So I'm looking for something like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And I just let that sit until it's dry. Well, after a nice hot cup of tea, this has had plenty of time to sit there and dry. So we can get the band clamp off. And I'll flip it over and we can start attaching the slats. Now because wood expands and contracts across its grain, I'm not going to use any glue on the ends of these slats. If I did, it might prevent the wood from moving and it might split. So I'm just going to hold them all in place with some nails. And I'm spacing out the slats with a couple of spacer blocks. And that way I'll get a uniform distance between each board all the way across. And I can just hold it in place with a finish nail. And then I'll just move the slats on and do the next one. And keep going until I get to the end. Well, next I'm going to start building these uprights. Now, these are strong enough to support the upper deck, but I think they're going to look better if I make them a little thicker. Now, I'm going to get some of the uprights out of this block. Anytime you're resawing thick material like this, it's a good idea to use as wide a blade as you can. It'll give you a more accurate cut. So I'm just putting a 30 mil wide blade here on the bandsaw. Now this blade must be about 4 meters long and it's in one continuous loop, hence the term bandsaw. Well now I'm going to adjust the tension on the blade and on the back here there's a gauge that shows me what the correct tension is for a 30 mil wide blade. And one last thing to check before we close up the door is to make sure that the band doesn't come off the wheel as it's rotating around. And that looks great. The next thing to do is to wind the safety guard down. And that serves two purposes. One, it protects your fingers, but it also has a couple of little uh, bearings in here, and that stops the blade from wandering. And you want this to be as close down to the work as you can get it. With the fence set to 40 mil, I'm ready to rough cut the pieces out. Well, sometimes when you cut a piece of wood in half, you get a few unpleasant surprises. There's no indication on the edge of this board of any problem. But when I turned it over and had a look on the inside, I found I had a split that ran from there right to the end. But I'm not too worried about it because I only want a 75 mil wide board out of this piece, and I've got plenty of space to get that underneath. Now, all wood is permanently under tension, and when you cut it in half, you release internal stresses in the wood. Now, even though the cut I made on the bandsaw was straight, I'm left with a concave bow, but I'm going to flatten that out on the jointer. Now this face is flat, I'll rotate the board around and keep that firmly up against the fence, and then I can square up the next edge. With the face side down, I'll run it through the thickness planer until I get it down to the thickness I want, which is 30 mil. The fourth side gets cut on the table saw. I've set the fence to 76 mil, and that'll leave me one mil to clean up on the jointer. Mm. 
Well, don't go away. When we come back, we're going to build some feet, some wheels, and we're going to finish this project. Welcome back to the Great British Woodshop. In the first half, we built the lower deck and the uprights. Now I'm going to start building the feet. Now the ones down this end stay as they are, with the casters on the bottom. But down this end, I'm going to make them a little longer, and I'm going to make some wooden wheels. Let me show you how I'm going to do that. One way I could make all the legs is to cut them out with a jigsaw and sand them back to the line. But I've got a quicker way, make a wooden template. And I'll use this template in conjunction with the router. First, I transfer details from a cardboard template onto a piece of MDF. I make the cutout for the tenon on the bandsaw and cut the remaining leg detail using a jigsaw. Now, the real secret in making any template is that the surface has to be smooth because any imperfection will be carried across to the workpiece. I'll rough cut the blank out with the jigsaw, otherwise there'll be too much material for the router bit to remove and I'll attach the template with some double-sided tape. And then when the router bit follows the edge of the template, it won't matter whether I make four or 400, every leg will turn out exactly the same. Now if I continue to cut around the template, when I get around the bottom section here, I'm gonna end up in a cross-grain situation, and the cutter may catch the grain and split this wood. So I'm gonna work down both sides to the center. And to do that, I'm just gonna flip the board over, the only problem now is my template's on the bottom and the bearing on the cutter is at the top. But this cutter has a bearing on the top and the bottom, so all I have to do is raise it up. And I can use the bottom bearing to make the cut. Well, I've made all the marks I need on the blank to set up the mortise and tenon jig, and now I'm finally ready to cut that tenon. Now I'm ready to cut the mortises in the underside of the lower deck and I've set the depth of the cutter to match the tenon. Well there's one of the wheels for the serving trolley. The second one I'm going to make out of this blank. I've drawn a circle 150 mil in diameter and I'm going to rough cut it out at the bandsaw and then I'll sand it to a perfect circle over on the sanding station. To get this effect on the wheel, I'm using a rounding over bit. But instead of making this point on the bit flush with the surface, I've set it a little bit deeper, and that'll give us this step detail, which is more interesting for the wheel. I'll also drill a 10 mil diameter hole in the center of the wheel over in the drill press, and that'll be for the axle. I'm just adding a little bit of detail to the bottom of the lower deck by making a chamfer with my block plane. And I'm going to do the same thing to the bottom of the foot. Now any time I've got two bits of wood I'm joining together where there's an obvious joint, I celebrate the joint by doing something like this. I don't try and hide it. It looks nice if you do that. Now I've also drilled a hole in the leg, and that's where the wheel will attach with the axle. So a little glue on the mortise and in the tenon, or in the mortise and on the tenon. And this mortise and tenon joint is so snug, I'm not even going to worry about a clamp. I'm just going to hold it there with a brad. Well, these are the front legs, and I made them exactly the same way as I made the back ones, except I just cut the bottom of them off. And I also drilled a 10 mil hole in the bottom of the foot, and that's to take these little steel inserts. And this is part of the caster. I just need to hit those in with a hammer. Now, take it easy when you're putting these in, because there's not a lot of wood there either side, and it could split, so just nice and steady. bit of glue on the mortise and tenon on this front leg. 
I'll just hold this in place a couple of brads as well. Well, there's a couple of additions I want to add to the trolley, a bottle holder and a glass holder. And to drill those holes, I need some equally spaced centers. And to find those centers, I'm going to use this little gadget. It's a concertina gauge. And wherever I slide it to, it gives me equally spaced centers. So I can line it up on the board and mark it out. And then I'm going to cut these holes with a hole saw over at the drill press. And now some holes for the wine and soft drink bottles. And I'm softening all the holes with a rounding over bit. The uprights get attached to the lower deck with some waterproof glue and some 44mm finish nails. And the upper deck gets attached the same way. Well, before I can do the tiling, I'm going to put these casters on. This shank slides into this steel insert. It comes as a set. And with a bit of luck, this will steer a little better than a supermarket trolley, but you never know. They're not easy to put in, but they do go in. Down this end, I've got our wooden wheel. And I've squared out a hole to take the top of the bolt. And that'll stop this from moving about, keep the bolt anchored. I've also chosen a carriage belt that's got a smooth shank because over time with this wheel spinning and spinning on the leg it would wear out the inside so that should prevent that happening. With a couple of washers to act as a spacer and one on this side and then I'll finish it off with a little nylon locking nut. To attach the tiles to the trolley, I'm using a waterproof tile adhesive, and it's three and a half parts powder to one part water. I'm just going to mix it up until I get it into a paste. Well, that's the sort of consistency I'm looking for. It's just a paste, a bit like regular cement. Now, the ply that I'm using here is exterior grade plywood. It's called WBP and that stands for water and boil proof. And the reason I use that is I don't want any moisture from the cement being absorbed into it because if it did, it'd swell and it'd spoil the whole top of the tile finish. I'm just going to lay this on here and spread it out. And the thickness I'm looking for here is around about three mil. I've protected the top of the wood here with masking tape and that'll make cleanup a lot easier. Anytime you lay tiles, you need to spread out the cement with a notched spreader. You can get big ones like look like trowels, but I just have this little one and this will serve my purposes just fine. You can see it creates these little ridges and valleys and that'll give the tile some room to move as it beds into the cement. Now this is the fun part. I'm just gonna line these tiles up by eye I wonder if this one will fit. Ah, just kidding. Now, I did actually design this tile section around these specific tiles. So if you are going to build yourself a serving trolley, make that measurement first. And it doesn't have to be three across and four up. You can use the big 600 mil square tiles. As long as they fit evenly, that's the only thing you're looking for. I've chosen porcelain tiles instead of ceramic because ceramic can uh, absorb moisture and if your climate is such that it freezes overnight the moisture could end up cracking the tile 
I'm just going to let the cement set for 24 hours and then I'll start applying some grouting. Well the tile cement's all set up and now I'm just ready to mix up some grout. And this is a sandstone colored grout. I picked that on purpose because I think it'll match the tiles nicely. Just the same, it's a powder and it gets mixed up with three parts powder to one part water. And then I'll just mix it into a consistency of paste just like I did with the cement. This is the sort of consistency that you're looking for. And I'm just going to dump about half of this out and then spread it around onto the tile. You can see how this tape is coming in handy, keeping the grout off the wood. The secret with this is to make sure that you can get the grout all the way into the spaces. And I'm just working over each piece, continuing to go over it until I make sure that all the air is pushed out and the grout is filled into all the spaces. The next step in this process is to wipe all these tiles down with a wet sponge. But I think it's a good idea to scrape as much of this powder off as you can now, and that's why I'm using this metal trowel, because then you have to put less moisture on the tiles and in the grout. Well now all there is to do is wipe this over with this sponge and then I'll let it sit for a few hours and then we'll be ready to put on some finish. Well the grout's all dry and the tape's off and I gave everything a wipe down with some cellulose thinners and that'll help the uh, oil absorb into the wood. I'm just putting this stuff on with a brush. This outdoor finish I'm using has got UV inhibitors in it which will help prevent the wood from turning grey when it's out in the sunlight. And I'm just sticking it on with a foam brush, let it sit there for a bit, give it a wipe down, let it dry for a couple of hours, give it another coat, and I can't wait to get this out on the deck. Well this project's been all about improvements and I must say I'm very happy with how it's turned out and happy that we've got such a lovely day to enjoy it. From all of us here at the Great British Woodshop, I'm David Free. Cheers.